Hello everyone, this is Tricky and welcome back to another video. This morning we got a brand new Sun and Moon trailer and I am super excited. Right off the bat, Mega Evolution will be coming back in Sun and Moon and a lot of people were wondering about that and I for one, I'm kind of very excited that they're bringing that back and I know that it's a little broken in competitive play and I know that's why they're like, oh we should probably ban the Megas. But I really wanted them to return. I actually didn't understand why they would remove Mega Evolution when they made such a big deal about it in the last two games and whatnot and it would just kind of screw up some of the Pokemon when it even comes to competitive play and how they battle. With that said, it's very unlikely that we will receive any new Mega Evolutions because this game is kind of focusing on Alolan forms and I'm really happy with that because at least we get to see the old Megas and they're not just scrapped from the game entirely. So I'll be happy to see some familiar faces. Of course, the biggest thing that was revealed in this new trailer is the starter evolutions. The middle evolutions are actually quite adorable and I love them. <laughs> Let's start off with with Dartrix, the evolution of Rowlet. It is the blade quill Pokemon, grass flying, and it has the ability overgrow. This thing is hilarious. It has this little piece of leaf hair and just pushes it away from its face. It looks like it's going through a phase. And he kind of reminds me of Sanji from One Piece. He looks sassy. I'm sure that most of you have heard of the Chinese leaks and we will cover those in a different video. I'm just very curious if our starters will be receiving a midnight form and a midday form, much like Rockruff, because they did say that they have something in common and that would be best case scenario that would be amazing if our final evolutions actually got two different exclusive forms hopefully that's what we get but if we don't it'll be okay I'll just be slightly sad. Moving on, I really wanted to see what Dartrix was all about, so I'm gonna read its little description on the Pokemon Sun and Moon website. I'm very curious, I love this kind of stuff. Dartrix is extremely sensitive to other presences in the area and can detect opponents behind it and throw feathers to strike them without even seeing them. And let's remember, this is the Blade Quill Pokemon, so its feathers are as sharp as blades. This Pokemon conceals sharp bladed feathers inside its wings, showing astounding precision as it sends them flying an attack. Oh, I love it! Revealing a certain snobbiness in its personality, Dartrix cares a great deal about its appearance, grooming its feathers in every spare moment. In truth, it is also a bit of a bird brain with a tendency to bungle things up. Once it makes a mistake, it sometimes gets into a desperate struggle to gloss over the situation and ends up making a bigger mess than ever. Sounds like me! So this should be Dartrixy Wee. New mascot confirmed. Just kidding. At times, this Pokemon feels so bothered by its dirty or ruffled feathers that it can't focus on battle. When it loses its focus, it sometimes even retires from the battle on the spot. It's up to each trainer to help Dartrix overcome this troublesome stage. <laughs> if this Pokemon is with a trainer who helps it through, its strength will grow hugely. So those who pick Rowlet and evolve it into Dartrix, you will have some issues in battle and that is amazing. I love how that is a thing. Ah, oh, this game is gonna be great. I cannot wait. But let's move on to the other starters now. Next we have Litten's Evolution, Toracat, the Fire Cat Pokemon, and it has the ability Blaze. So this one is very interesting. I think it's very cute, a lot better than what I was actually expecting because I thought that it was gonna go two-legged, much like all the other starters that we've ever gotten. And I would love it if it would stay on all four legs, but if you know the Chinese leaks, which again, I'll be covering in another video, you know that it may actually end up standing up on two legs and Oh, that makes me sad, but oh well. The bell-like object attached to the base of Toracat's neck is a flame sack, an organ that can produce flames. So it's a flesh bell. That's kind of creepy, but oh well, it's okay. Toracat's emotions cause a rise in the organ's temperature, and when that organ spits flames, it rings with a high, clear sound of a bell. That's actually pretty cool. I like that. That's that's very creative. Toracat's mane serves as an excellent sensory organ, and it can sense what's going on around it, even in the dark. <gasps> Fire dark type confirm. I'm oh, just kidding. I really don't know. But anyway, it can detect the presence of hidden enemies. Toracat has a great love for battle and will attack so relentlessly that its opponents lose the will to fight. And yet, it sometimes behaves like a spoiled child in front of its trainer or Pokemon with whom it has built a relationship of trust. The cat punch that this Pokemon can dish out with its strong forelegs is extremely powerful. It can bend iron bars and knock out large men with a single blow. So they did say that this will potentially become a wrestler cat or a tiger, but we'll have to see until that is confirmed. So let's move on to Poplio's evolution. Poplio evolves into Brion, which is absolutely adorable. It is the pop star Pokemon and it has the ability Torrent. I actually really, really like this and I think they're trying to go for a Siren and that is 
is amazing because this thing sings. And speaking of singing and Poplio, if you missed my Poplio song, you should definitely check it out. I wrote it. I know a lot of people don't like it, but I actually really like it and I, oh, I'm sorry. But anyways, Brion learns its dances by imitating the other members of its colony. It sometimes even learns dances from humans. This Pokemon is a hard worker and pours itself into the efforts until it has memorized each dance. As it dances, Brion creates balloon after balloon. In battle, it first sets its opponent into a disarray with its dancing, and then slaps the balloons into its target, causing the balloons to explode and deal damage. Ah, oh, it's a hard worker and it will kill you, I love it! Brian can dance in perfect time with others, even if they just only met. On Moonlight Night, you could sometimes see throngs. Oh my gosh, I thought that was thongs of Brian, and I was about to be very worried. Why would you do that, Pokemon? Oh, okay, moving on. Brian always acts cheery and positive. Even when it's feeling sad, this Pokemon doesn't allow sorrow to show. It is sad that Brian will only reveal a sad expression to a Pokemon or trainer to whom it has opened its heart completely. I love this thing. I really, really do. And I'm sick of the people bullying it. What has Poplio and Brion ever done to anyone? Of course, everyone is entitled to their own opinion, but they don't have to bully it. They could just say, I don't really like his design and move on. But instead it's like, I hate this thing, kill it. That's not very nice. Don't say that. You wouldn't want someone to kill you because you're ugly. I'm not saying you're ugly, but I love you. I really don't know what I'm saying. I'm just very, very excited about Pokemon. And then I'm sorry, I, I, I really wasn't calling anyone ugly. <laughs> So that wasn't the only thing that was revealed in the trailers. It says, have fun with other players in Festival Plaza. I want that castle that looks amazing. This is a secret place where you could come and I, it, w it went too fast. Um, can we, can we, can we re replay that? Please. This is a secret place where you could come to play using communication features. So you could use your Wi-Fi, you could pop in, you could battle people, you could play with people. It would just be a very nice little experience for you and your friends and other people that you meet. You could earn festival coins by fulfilling other players' requests. Oh, that's fantastic. And you could get on a Tauros to destroy things. This is a fantastic place. They have a bouncy house. You could jump in the bouncy house. Oh, is it only just for Pokemon? Oh. Another very, very sweet feature that they added is a little place for your box Pokemon to have a little paradise. And that is fantastic. You don't have to feel bad about letting your Pokemon rot in there anymore. So they have a little paradise in there and they could have a little fun. Wild Pokemon might even join your game. You can let your Pokemon search for valuable items and they could bring you back treasure. That is amazing. Leaf Stone, Dusk Stone, Float Stone, Shiny Stone, things that you actually could need. That's amazing. You could also leave your Pokemon there for training and you could even make some awesome coconut drinks. Yeah, and then back to what I said before, Mega Evolution is back. Oh, why are they attacking Sylveon? Don't, don't do that. But anyway, on October the 18th of 2016, we will be able to play a special demo. And let me know in the comment section below if you're going to be getting the demo. I'm pretty sure that I'm gonna get the demo. I really want the demo. And on top of that, Ash Greninja is also in game. We will be able to have Ash Greninja. Is Ash in the game? Or did Ash give away this freaking Ash Greninja too because he gives away all of his good Pokemon? But you know what? I'm okay with that. I would take care of Ash Greninja a lot better than Ash can. Gosh dang it. So that was a whole bunch of information and I really, really hope that you guys enjoyed it. Let me know in the comment section below what your favorite thing was and what your favorite starter evolution would be. And let me know what starter you're probably gonna go with. Also, if you came up with any kind of nicknames for these Pokemon, let me know those as well. I love reading nicknames and I just love comments from y'all. I just like to see what y'all are thinking. Have fun discussing in the comment section below and all that good stuff. So these are my social links. You can follow me on Instagram, Twitter for updates and cats. Um, you can follow me on Snapchat too. It's still under the same name, Trikiwi. You can look me up and then you could look at a lot of Snapchats about my cat because I do that a lot. So anyway, I hope you guys really enjoyed it and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.